it takes typically five to six months to reach your fullest potential on the LSAT. And so I would say start studying now and then aim for a June or July test date. That's my general recommendation because the more time you allow, the more likely you are to reach your fullest potential. And so I would suggest you get your hands on, on some actual official LSAT exams. They're published by LSAC in books of 10 for about $20 each. And they're the best study material you can get. And I wouldn't say just do exam after exam. Instead, I would build the foundation first, doing questions untimed by type. And even before that, I would say read some textbook chapters or watch some video material giving you the basics of each question type before you dive into it. Mm -hmm. So you would recommend uh, June to July, take the test and then apply for the spring, the upcoming spring semester, correct? Not a lot. Uh, some law schools don't take spring semester beginning students. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about deadlines for that. Most people apply in the fall or winter to start the following year. Okay. But spring admissions really varies from school to school. And I think most schools don't typically have new students starting in the spring semester because 1L first year of law school is a very defined time period where you're learning certain foundational material. Right. Um, in terms of, uh, I've heard that the logic games is probably one of the hardest sections. Um, what are some tools or mechanisms, mechanisms you think I should use when approaching this section? Yeah, logic games is typically the most intimidating section at first because it's least like what you've done previously, but it is the most learnable section. So suggestions would be diagram. Diagram, don't try to do it all in your head. Your pencil should always be moving. And also focus on game types. So do ordering games, then grouping games, then combination games. So do the games by type from easy to hard within each category. And that's actually something that my study plans suggest for you. They lay out exactly which games to complete in a particular order and which foundational material to do prior to that so that you're set up for success and don't get too frustrated as you're diving into them. Okay. Um, as far as the diversity statement, um, what is your recommendation on uh, what I should write for it? Well, it's really about what you feel you bring to the table as a diverse law school applicant. So I would suggest covering something different than what's already covered in your primary law school personal statement, but it can really be anything at all. It can be on the basis of race or ethnicity. It can be based on sexual orientation. It can be based on something else altogether. It's just whatever you bring to the table as a unique applicant. So when you think of diversity statement, is there anything that comes to mind for yourself that you might want to talk about? Uh, race ethnicity. Okay. Um, what else? First generation, things of that sort. Yeah, that's all great. I would just suggest rather than speaking in broad terms, make it really specific. So talk about your involvement in cultural organizations or community organizations or affinity groups of some kind. And yeah, just make, tell stories. Tell stories about your experiences. All right. Um, any more questions? Um, what do you find is the most troubling section for the LSAT when you come across, when you talk to students? Well, it varies from student to student. I think, I think that logic games is the scariest section at first, but like I said, it is the most learnable and the most perfectible, actually. Reading comprehension tends to be harder to improve upon significantly because you've been reading your whole life and habits are deeply ingrained. And so if you find that you're struggling with reading comprehension, I would definitely give that more time. And the nice thing about the LSAT is that there are nearly 100 released exams, so there's plenty of material out there for you. There's four games per exam and four reading comp passages per exam. So if you wanted to, you could complete 400 games and 400 passages before you took the LSAT, and that would set yourself up for maximal success if you reviewed those problems in depth. So it's really a question of exposure and pattern recognition so that when you encounter a new game or passage on the exam, you're not totally thrown for a loop. Are there any recommendations that you have for me, like moving forward from today, being that I want to start taking the L, like start 
practicing to take that in June. Yeah, sure. Well, since you've got a long timeline, the more exposure you can get to the study materials and advice, the better. So I've got a ton of resources for you. I have the LSAT Unplugged YouTube channel and podcast. I also have an Instagram account and a Facebook group. And so you can just kind of follow all those or join all of those and start dipping your toes in the water bit by bit. If you were to just watch one video a day or listen to one podcast every week, over the course of a few months, you would know a lot more about the LSAT than you currently do. And so during your commute, if you can listen to the podcast or watch a video and just gain some general advice along the way. I mean, I'm putting out tons of material every day on all of those platforms, YouTube, the podcast, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And so just start absorbing that. It's all free. And then when you're ready to seriously dive in, get one of the study plans or join the course so that you can get some more organized and comprehensive materials for yourself. But you've got plenty of time now. So you've got, you've got at least six months to study for this exam. And so make the most of it. Just do a little bit each week and then ramp it up as you get closer to your test date. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.